Somebody needs to call EA Sports and tell them April Fool's Day was three months ago and they're a little late to the party because that's the only way that the list that they came out with Tuesday morning is logical. And I get it. There's going to be people in the comment section saying, look at Cole being over dramatic again. But you know what? I've waited 10 years for the game that brought joy to my childhood to be back on my television screen. And because of my job and where I've traveled throughout the SEC, I know what atmospheres and stadiums are like. And I can tell you with firsthand knowledge, the list that EA Sports came out with is egregiously wrong. And on top of that, those who say, oh, this doesn't really matter. No, it, it does. It actually does for the video game psyches in your life. So let's go ahead and discuss But what's going on SEC Unfiltered. It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you like the video, hit the ring notification, and subscribe. That way you don't miss a single episode of SECU because we're talking college sports every day leading up to week one of the regular season. Make sure that you're following us on all the social channels, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. Follow me on social media, at Mr. Cole Thompson, and my own YouTube channel, at Mr. Cole Thompson. Download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Leave a one-star review if you hate this type of content. Leave a five-star review if you love this type of content. And to keep up with everything that we're doing, make sure that you visit secunfiltered.com. This episode's brought to you by Roback. Use promo code SECU for 20% off all joggers, polos, hoodies, and shorts. Promo code SECU for 20% off at roback.com. The list is maniacally, idiotically bad. I don't know how else to put it. And yes, I am going to be a little enraged because of I have been to almost every atmosphere in college football in the SEC. And I can tell you what is a good stadium and what is a great atmosphere. There are two drastically different scenarios. So let's just go through what EA Sports came up with. Number one, Kyle Field. Number two, Bryant Denny Stadium. Number three, Tiger Stadium. Number four, Ohio Stadium. Five, Sanford Stadium. Six, Beaver Stadium. Seven, Camp Randall Stadium. Eight, Gaylord. Nine, Dope Campbell. And 10, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Here's the problem with that. Just because of it is a big stadium and just because of a lot of wins have taken place there, do not make it a great atmosphere. I understand that everyone is going to have their own ruling. So I'm not going to tell you what my top 10 is, but I will say that there are some rules that I will state. Let's go through them real fast. Number one, LSU is the top choice. That's just it. Bottom line. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care where you've gone. If you do not have LSU at number one, you don't know what you're talking about. Number two, Auburn needs to be in your top 10. It could be at two, it could be at 10, it could be at seven, but it needs to be in the pecking order. And number three, Neyland Stadium and Tennessee belongs in your top five. Let's go through it. LSU at number one. Anybody who has ever been to an atmosphere game day in Baton Rouge knows exactly what I'm talking about. This starts with the crack of dawn. Early, the smell wafting of bourbon and boudin bites, and you are excited that you get to see the Tigers play. And it's a festival. It is a day. It is an atmosphere, and it is one that cannot be duplicated. And they carry that same mantra, that animosity, that hostility, the fans that they don't like from the opposing side. They carry that into Tiger Stadium. And if it's a night game, best of luck to the opposing team. Best of luck to them. You are very rarely going to see LSU drop a game when they are on their P's and Q's and have a roster that is willing and able to win a national title. You very rarely will see a team collapse under the pressure. On top of that, that is what you expect college game day to be. When you talk about atmospheres in college football, LSU is the pinnacle. And it starts off with the fan base and it carries on into the stadium. It goes throughout neck. It goes throughout the fan playing at halftime. It goes throughout the fourth quarter. You don't see fans leave. It could be New Mexico State for all I care. And those ravenous Tigers will come out of the boondocks and they will gladly sit and stay to watch their Tigers trump whoever. They will always do that. So that is number one. It is not number three. It is number one. Number two. I know that people are going to bring up Auburn as not a difficult place to play because of you look at what happened when last season New Mexico State marched on in and beat Q Freeze. Okay, have you ever noticed that the Iron Bowl never is lopsided and has crazy shit happen when they play at Brian Denny Stadium? You ever notice that? No. You want to know why? Because of there is a shaman man buried underneath Jordan Hare and his voodoo magic makes insane things happen inside of Auburn, Alabama. 
It's why the Iron Bowl is a madness. It's why the kick six happened. It's why Jarrett Stidham was able to beat Nick Saban. It's why Bo Nix has a title against them. They've gone down to the wire on countless occasions. On top of that, they also went to quadruple overtime against the Heisman Trophy winner with Brian Harson as their head coach and needed fourth and 31 and a miracle play from Jalen Milrow to Isaiah Bond in the back of the corner to win that game. And you want to tell me that that place is not a hostile environment and one of the greatest atmospheres in college football. What else do you need? How about you just look at every single game that has ever happened at Jordan Hare and talk about the ambiance of what it is. And by the way, let's also throw in those fans are ravenous. They're great to actual outsiders, unless you're an Alabama fan. And besides that, even then, they're great to fans. The city of Auburn itself is beautiful. It's a great campus. The atmosphere on game day is phenomenal. It's second to none. And they absolutely love their Tigers too. It's a great place. The fact that it's not in the top 10 on this list is automatically just wrong. I can understand if you don't want to put it at three. I can understand if you're an Alabama fan. I'm an Alabama grad. I can understand putting it at seven. I can understand putting it at nine. But Brian Denny Stadium may be a cathedral in college football. But sometimes those smaller atmospheres, those smaller churches that we go to that are beautiful on the inside, they carry a little bit more bite. That's Jordan Hare Stadium. And then let's talk about Neyland. Neyland not being on this list. Neyland to me is number two. That's my number two. I'll just tell you right now. LSU is number one and Neyland's number two. But Neyland not being on this list. Does anybody know what the sickos were thinking when they decided to build that stadium? They made it straight up. So the sound carries, and it echoes, and it doesn't go anywhere. When you look at Kyle Field, and when you look at DKR, and even Gaylord, yeah, those are great stadiums. They are absolutely fantastic atmospheres. But the sound travels out. The sound travels up. And the only way it can go up is back down and reverse. And by the way, it may not be the biggest stadium in the SEC, but if you are over 200 pounds, I hate to break it to you, folks, you're going to be sitting sardine style inside of those bleachers up top to watch the balls play. And also, let's throw this into consideration. Alabama, a few years ago, went and marched in, and they played against a Hendon Hooker, Josh Heupel-led offense and went down to the wire. And when the final kick went through, you watched as those fans clad in that orange and that white march into the field and take over. You don't see that at most places. And by the way, as somebody who has been there through the dark ages, the Derek Dooley era, the Butch Jones era, even the Jeremy Pruitt era, you do realize that that stadium has always been filled to capacity. You can't say that about Ryan Denny Stadium. You can't say that about Kyle Field at times. Most of the time you can, but there are times where I have seen Kyle Field actually be lackluster. I just worked there for the last three years. I've seen Kyle Field not be filled to the brim. There is nowhere like Neyland Stadium in college football besides maybe Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is why one is number one and one is number two. Now, I get it, and there's going to be people saying, well, if you throw in all SEC teams, it's going to show bias, and you're going to have the people coming out of the crowd screaming, SEC bias, SEC bias. Well, the, the reason why it's SEC bias is not because of it's a bad thing. It's because of it's good. It's because of these type of atmospheres you don't see in the Big 12. You will at some places. I think Boone Pickett Stadium is one of the most underappreciated campuses in all of college football. I think it's one of the most beautiful stadiums. You will in Utah. You will 100% at Rice-Eccles. But, but you don't see this everywhere in the ACC either. Yeah, maybe at Dope Campbell every once in a blue moon it'll get to that atmosphere. And certainly I think Clemson belongs on this list. But you don't see it in Miami. You don't see it at NC State. You don't see it at UNC. You don't see it at Duke. You don't see it at Pitt. You don't see it anywhere. And you don't see it in the Big Ten. Yeah, I get it. SEC bias is a big thing to a lot of people. But it also is a major asset to the success of this squad and why the SEC has been as advertised. And so to me, when you add it all together, I understand that you got to make fans happy, but you got to be right. And here's the part. When you play the video game, you also have to realize that that is going to factor into your success. Bryant Denny Stadium is a beautiful place, and Alabama is a great team. That doesn't mean it's a great atmosphere. There have been multiple times where in the fourth quarter you've seen people leak. Oh, and by the way, I'm just a dude on the internet talking. 
I'm just a dude that is able to come out and spew words and nonsensical magic to you guys. Nick Saban is a guy that has won six national titles during his tenure in Tuscaloosa and a seventh at LSU. And he said that Auburn is one of the toughest places to play. He said that Neyland Stadium is one of the most hostile atmospheres to play at. He's talked highly about LSU. So I may be just a normal person that has opinions. But you respect Nick Saban's opinion, don't you? I mean, the guy is the GOAT. Wouldn't you respect the GOAT, what he thinks? I get Tex a and I get the reasoning behind it. It's big, it's loud, it's bolsters. The, the, the stadium shakes, it does. But that doesn't always gravitate towards success and also atmosphere. I believe Texas A&M is in the top 10. I will gladly give Aggie fans that. But it's not number one. It's not even in my top five, in my opinion. I understand why Florida. Florida is a great place. I'm telling you right now, if you look at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on a Saturday night in a great atmosphere, yeah, it's rocking and rolling. Is it better than Tennessee? I don't think so. Is it better than Jordan Hare? I don't think so. Is it better than some teams on this list? Absolutely, but that's why this list is egregious. At the end of the day, my list does not matter compared to everyone else's list, but the blessing in disguise is all of us get to rally together and say, we need change. And right at the bottom, it says, subject to change. I'll be really interested to see how EA Sports handles this, because in the end, you have to realize there are beautiful places. There are great stadiums. There are an Fathomable atmospheres, but that doesn't always translate to the most hostile environments on a Saturday night in college football. I can tell you what, you will not find much more ravenous than Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. And if you are going to go at least somewhere near there, Jordan Hare and Neyland Stadium at least belong somewhere in the top 10. But let me know in the comment section down below, what is your top 10? Who do you think was underrated? Who do you think was drastically overrated? Make sure that you like, hit subscribe, follow us on social media at SEC Unfiltered. If you like this type of content, leave a one-star review, a five-star review in the podcast system. If you hate this type of content, leave a one-star review. And to keep up with everything that we're doing here, make sure that you follow us at secunfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson. Until next time, SEC fans, the loyalists who know college football and the atmospheres on game day. Later.